says to her the most important thing. At the cross, Jesus had said to the beloved disciple and to his mother, as he gave them to each other, Mother, this one is your son, and son, this one is your mother. My family is your family. My family is your family. And he had given them each a new family and a new community. Was it just for those two? Oh no. Oh beloved, oh no, that's what, that's what this lesson is about. That's what he's saying to Magdalene outside the grave. He says to her, I'm going to my father and your father. My father is your father. I'm going to my God who is your God. Mikasa is su casa. <laughs> my house as in family is your family. The relationship that I have with God, says Jesus, where the parent is understood. When they call Jesus son of God, what they mean is, the father, the, in the first century biology, the father is in the son. That's a, that you recognize, they can see God in this character, Jesus. And now, Jesus says to Mary, that's what you are. God is visible in you. Just like God has been visible in me. Your relationship with God and my relationship with God are now one and the same. Wow. God is in Magdalene reconciling the world to himself, just as God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. We are all a part of that reconciliation. We get to be. In the same way that Christ was reconciling the world to God. In John's Gospel, in the letters of John, where Jesus comes because God so loves the world, because it's God's will that nobody perish, we are all God's children now. That's what he says. We are all God's children now. So Paul says in, in the letter to the Corinthians, he says, you know, we have to be really careful about how we treat people. Because one time, we didn't realize that God was in somebody and it was Christ. And we got it all wrong and look how we treated him. God is living now in all of us. John isn't alone in, in his view of this. You know, Luke says that at the Pentecost event, God's spirit is poured out on all flesh. The only other time in the Bible that all flesh is used is when God promises Noah and all the animals, everything in the world, that that flood again will never destroy the world. So God's spirit is in all of the creation now. Everywhere. All flesh. Frankly, it's easier for me to see God's spirit active in my dog Rita and Bo than sometimes it isn't in some people, you know. Um, I always love to share with you the, the comment of my dear friend back east, uh, Luzbis Minda was her name, she was from the Philippines, and she always says, yeah, I look for the Christ in everybody, but sometimes you give me ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> she says, but I keep looking. I keep looking. I'm sure you can think of one or two people that it's more difficult for you to see Christ in them too. God raised Jesus from the dead. People experience him in their own way. His wounds were there, but they had no more power over him. It was always Jesus, but he was never recognized until he said a name or blessed some bread or, or opened the scriptures or cooked breakfast for them on the beach or said, why don't you cast your net on the other side? And suddenly, you know, and suddenly, oh, it's the Lord. And suddenly they'd say to them, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it must be a duck. Jesus is back. <laughs> Easter is about God's power to transform the death of Jesus, <coughs> the death of Jesus into the harrowing of hell, the destruction of Hades. The icons of Holy Saturday all show Jesus with a flag of victory in hell, you know, in the Hades, in Hades, having broken the gates, having broken the locks, giving a hand up to all those characters out of the Hebrew Bible 
beginning with Adam and Eve, you know? And the mythical first sin sinners, right? So whatever you've done, whatever you've done, you have nothing to fear. This is about God's grace. Easter is about God. It's about God's grace, not your sins. <clears throat> Yesterday, I visited with Glenn Roster. He's one of our speakers on HIV AIDS, a longtime survivor, and now he's coming to the end of his journey. He is dealing with an inoperable cancer. We read yesterday together the gospel story and the Acts lesson. The Acts lesson that says, God shows no partiality. God shows no partiality, no favorites. And Jesus says that he's going to his father and your father. His God and your God. And the, that's the way God was in Jesus, is the way that God is now in us. And what that means when you're up against the edge, as Glenn is, is that you don't have to be afraid to live. He's lived through a lot in the last few years. And he's not been afraid. And you don't have to be afraid to die. Because the God who can transform a cross into the destruction of hell and the beginning of new life for the whole world can do a lot in your life. Beloved, there are people in this very room right now who are living with HIV, AIDS, in whom God's Spirit lives and moves. Amen. Who are actively transforming the world around them. Amen. And not only for those living with AIDS, but models of faith for all of us. We have in this room people who have been living with mental illness, misunderstood, have had a tough life. Just like Mary Magdalene lived with mental illness. And God's Spirit is living in those people and helping them. And God is working in their lives and through them to transform life for others who are living with mental illness and those of us who are not. There are many in this room who live with cancer and the threat of its recurrence. We've got a bunch right now. That dog is always under the bed for those people, right? But God's spirit is in their hearts. God's life is in their life. And something is different for all of us. And there are people in this room who have been to hell and back with the disease of addiction, a bunch of us. Alcohol, drugs, gambling, sex, and God's spirit is not ashamed to make a home in any of us either. God's Spirit is at home in us to use us just like God used Jesus, just like God used Mary. If we don't say, don't name this aloud, we will be remiss. Those churches who make women second class, and those of you who may have grown up making women second class, Jesus is here in his resurrection garden when Mary comes with her crate hanging and even her mental illness bouts, and Jesus ordained her to be the very first minister of the gospel, the very first preacher whom Jesus sent to preach the gospel to Peter, the first pope. This is not lost on the gospel of John. And whoever you in this room, we have people today who are with us who do not have documents that say they belong here. They came here when they were young, or they came here to pick the food that we eat. And now they are the hunted. And God is in them. Christ is in them. And there is no taking that away. And they will be here. And they will never in this church be asked what their documentation is any more than Jesus would say, where are your documents? And I will talk with you. <laughs> so, whoever you are, 
And wherever you are on your life's journey, whether you are old or young or red or brown or black or yellow or white, whether you are educated or not, whether you have papers or whether you don't, whether you are a Republican or a Democrat, whether you are straight, gay, bisexual, transgender, whether you are temporarily able-bodied or differently abled, whether you are male or female, whether you think you're a saint or know you're a sinner, God is in you. Amen. And God is in you to love you. And God is in you just as if God was in Christ to love the whole world through you. And God will love you in this life and God will love you right into the next. You have nothing to fear. So live it and be Christ for the world. Amen. Amen.